and welcome to Tech Talk Travel and our first episode of season four. My name is Leah Jordan and I'm very excited today to have our special Philip Ibrahim on the show. He's general manager of the Student Hotel just recently opened in Berlin. And I'm super excited you're having the time to sharing some knowledge with us and experiences. Thank you for your time and joining us, Philip. Thank you for uh, having me here. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, more than pleased. Uh, I was wondering what is what has happened in any series in season four, but I can't remember. So is season four is that a season four just started? You're the first one. That's so. what I mean. But usually in a big TV series, ah, what, is, this, right. is that a strong or what not happened a, so far? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I think to our audience is super interesting to uh, learn first uh, a little bit about how you got here, where you are today, mm. and to get a bit insight about your background. So shall we start there? Because as far as I know, you spent almost 20 years with Accor and yeah. now you're general manager of the student hotel which is a very interesting concept as many people obviously know so yeah yeah, yeah actually so, that's true um, we're sitting uh, up here in our playroom uh, which is uh, with exactly one of these so uh, I hope everybody has the chance to come here and see it once um, so the student hotel is quite a different concept and a very unique tackle towards the um, hospitality industry very different to what I've done before in all different uh, possibilities and yeah it has been nearly 20 years with Accor that I've spent it's a lot uh, well yeah it indicates a bit that I'm not 25 as I usually say <laughs> but uh, yes it's right um 18 years it was in, in total and I started my traineeship with Accor and literally I could I was able to do my entire career with Accor and was able to really grow from zero to hero which fits because oh, our, great. Yeah. our tagline here is together we can be heroes so it does really fit to what we what yeah. we did yeah and what's the traineeship with Accor your first touch point with the industry or how what made made you join our industry and become a hotelier yeah, it's very funny I, I don't come from a classical Uh, family with a gastronomical background. Um, everybody wanted that I go and study because I'm very good in talking. So everybody wanted me to be a lawyer, oh, but right. I didn't want it to because I think it was boring. Uh, <laughs> I guessed. And uh, then I had the chance to um, to do my civil service in a youth hostel, and that was basically when I when I started loving this industry and the tourism and having different people all around us. And that's when I when I decided that I want to stay longer and stick around that industry and then I was offered a job in uh, in uh, Stuttgart Sindelfingen uh, in right. a Novotel there and I started with Accor a three years traineeship which was actually quite good to do it and then I I sticked around it was uh, the right moments in the right times and I always was offered very interesting spots and places I did a lot of sales and commercial all right I see um, yeah. I was in uh, in Mannheim for two years Mm -hmm. which was great as well and then I went back to Stuttgart which is my home I'm born in Stuttgart you grew up in Stuttgart yeah well right. yeah I'm born there I grew up close to Stuttgart but uh, I always have like uh, some sort of attachment so I'm a VfB Stuttgart football fan which um, right. indicates that I'm really good in suffering <laughs> in the last 10 years there was more suffering than celebration okay. uh, but uh, that's what where I'm from All right, I see. And um, which I find really interesting is that the student hotel, I mean, the name conveys a bit about the concept itself, but would you like to give us some insight about yeah. the concept of it and the claim, we, together we can be heroes, which yeah. I really like. Uh, yes, the the difference is mainly that, well, I can say, I always say the story, my mother, when I said I'm, I'm I think about uh, moving and changing my job and working at the student hotel, she was immediately said, Do I have to sleep in a youth hostel now, or do I have to sleep in a student accommodation, or what do you what are yeah. you doing there? And I said, no, it's a bit different. The the student in the name um, is more an indication for the curiosity that is within our guests. So like, it doesn't matter how old you are, as long as you're curious about what's going on, as long as you're eager to meet people and you're ready to um, be part of a, a bigger community, that is more what the student indicates. So this hotel here in Berlin has 475 rooms. We have um, 285 rooms which are dedicated to real students who are studying and they do stay with us uh, up to one year. And right. the rest of the rooms, 190, is a uh, normal hotel room, so mm -hmm. to say, for guests that are uh, curious to explore Berlin, who, who really just come in um, for up to two weeks to be like a quick visitor of a city. And within these 190 rooms, we have 30 rooms. They have a little kitchen uh, included. So if you are 
uh, not a student anymore and you want to stay longer than two weeks with us, we do have an option for these guests as well. So these are the three main tribes of our hotel guests that we cater to. And that's the biggest part of that concept of having a community within the hotel. All right. And you have quite huge common spaces, I saw. Is yeah. that part of the concept as well? Yes. Um, a community needs place to uh, to be together. And in this, uh, in this spot here, we have uh, over a thousand square meters community space, as we would say, um, where we have a large restaurant, a large bar area. We're now finishing our courtyard, which is going to have an open air cinema uh, seating facilities where people can really be together and, and spend time together. We do have conference facilities. We have a dedicated study room where all students can go and study 24 hours. It's a bit like a library, mm -hmm. um, only for our student guests. Uh, we do have a huge um, a gym for everybody to use 24 hours. So everything is related to that co-working, co-living atmosphere. And as I said, we have these three tribes in the hotel. Uh, next door, we there will be a, v, a WeWork opening. So that's going to be the fourth tribe. So the, those people who are just here to co-work in certain manner, they will be part of that ground common uh, community space as well. And then the neighbors, obviously, and uh, and companies. So that's like the five parts of what we do and try to combine. All right, it sounds very complex. And <laughs> well, yeah, it does. I, I mean, it is a bit different than the yeah, other. Yeah, and it shows too. a bit of change as well. Like, like in in all these in the development of hotel concepts, it's, it seems like a kitchen becomes like a standard to to have the possibility to also have like mm -hmm. a apartment style offer. But um, when I think about this concept and. You're based in the middle of Berlin, like it's a perfect location. What role has like the, the local community? Is this important to you as, as well as this maybe the fifth tribe that you're trying to yeah. include? I would say locals, neighbors in, I mean, we're directly at the Alexanderplatz. So um, that is part of the idea, whether it's corporate neighbors or uh, uh, real living neighbors who, yeah. who do live here, both of them is a factor for what we do here. So we want to be very inclusive and open to everybody who's interested in the concept. So yes, um, that is massively important. I, I would not say that it is always the city center that makes the difference. Probably sometimes it's close to the student areas mm -hmm. in other destinations. We do have uh, 13 hotels open with um, the colleagues in Vienna opened uh, two weeks ago. The largest hotel of Austria, by the way, with 850 rooms. So it's double the size of that and the same approach towards that community thinking. Um, so that is obviously a big part of what we do. Yes. Um, Probably we should say the students do share a, com a communal kitchen. So I have, in addition to our restaurant downstairs, excuse me, um, we have 24 kitchens in the hotel for the students because the student gets a, a room to sleep in and to really live and a kitchen to cook and prepare. And that he shares with 11 other people oh, uh, right, on his cluster. So it's always put in cluster. So. And these areas are serviced also by your team okay. and taken yes. care of. All right. I mean, in the, in the concept, in the, in, the, in the contract that he has, there is um, a certain frequency in cleaning. And when he wants to increase that uh, frequency for his room, he can do that. He can go to reception or call us and say, hey, tomorrow can I have an extra cleaning? And he pays for an added service like any other guest. But there is a basic frequency in the cleaning of the kitchen and his private rooms. Yeah, that's right, included. Nice. Yeah, uh, just to combine our two worlds a bit, hmm. like technology is a factor that uh, I think no one can hide from. It's getting more and shouldn't, more shouldn't hide anymore, yeah. Yeah, it shouldn't. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's, a, that's an important point. And how do you consider technology being um, an element for your concept? How, how, <coughs> where do you have connection points? How do you see your staff reacting to, to technology? Is there, yeah. I'm very interested in learning about that. Well, uh, I mean, the major importance when you have huge community space uh, is a, a very strong internet and Wi-Fi connection. That's uh, I think, which I tested by the way, and it works perfectly. Yes, I'm very happy. I gotta I gotta thank the colleagues because the last two days was like the first time we really had like probably over 50, 60 people working in the community space at the same time on the network, and I experienced no cuts, nothing. So that was really like um, the, the the proof of concept, the, the first real hard test, and it worked out very very good. I'm very happy about that. Yes, but so Wi-Fi and having like a stable connection 
collection is the key because all of our students, all of the people in here, the first thing they use is their personal device. That's why, especially for that community in our hotel, a lot of communication and a lot of um, possibilities are going over their devices. So all the students have an app where they do for example the payment of the room but they can as well report any issues technical wise in the room is it an app that you provide that's an app that we provide oh, that's, that's a student hotel that's the own application that we have over this app they can be able to uh, open the the bicycles whatsoever that right. are uh, down in the basement but because part of the student uh, of the dealers as well that each student has always a bicycle available so i have 130 bikes in the in the in the garage down there and they can go with their uh, with their app and open it via Bluetooth. In the app they can see uh, is one of the laundry machines free and I can book it now so I can I can be in my room I'll see okay do I want to wash my clothes now? Yes I do. Okay then I'll book it and then I'll go down and wash it uh, and you have all the events all the stuff that we do and that's a big 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 part we do between 35 and 45 events a month to combine the tribes and to give them a platform to talk like yoga twice a week, uh, sports with personal coaches twice a week and so forth and so forth, movie nights and what, uh, all those things. Yeah. Wow, that's very complex indeed actually. Yeah. yeah. And with, with the technology factor, mm -hmm. like with your team, like where do you all see, like is there was this guest facing and yeah. the students use it and yeah. the guests probably, can they use the app as well? Um, the hotel guests, no. Well, they, they can download it's the app. But no, no, no the, added value. I would say the same, you know, an app, the, the, the usage of an app only functions if they, if we keep it on our phones and use it. Otherwise, it's just like a waste of data volume and for a hotel guest usually they're much more easy in, in making their ways with their existing apps but you got to think the the students in particular are people from all over the world they don't speak German so it's the first time that they come and giving them like the security by always having the connection in their hand what to do what to go how to communicate that is like really an added value to them yeah correct but um, the hotel guests usually work very offline and, and easy and self self-centered and self-organized uh, plus I do have staff members and they are marvelous and they're ready to answer all the questions all right and finding like the connection to your guest is yeah. there any um, technology enabling this relationship or you you feel like there is an element of technology necessary um, um, well now if we talk about the different tribes it's a bit uh, probably uh, there is not a solution that drives everything um, if I look at the customer journey, there are several parts where technology is a must and it will improve in the next um, period of times very rapidly, probably more rapidly than it has been before. Do you think that um, some people they are really hesitant to use technology? Or right, I made experience when I talked to many hotel mm. people, especially in operations, they're afraid of getting like replaced by technology. Yeah. What is your thesis? Like, what do you think in the future? Well, th there is well, there's three ma three major things. One. When the guest requires it, we got to deliver because that's our, we are, we, we care about guests. So we cannot say, uh, as an example, no, you have to call us to reserve a room. That doesn't work anymore. So if you're not able to display your room somewhere on the internet, right. I don't say on the which page or on the, yeah. in the optimum, in a perfect world under your own page and yeah. the people book it and use it. But because I mean, direct is best. Yeah, direct is best, <laughs> obviously. But um, if you you cannot say I don't do it because I don't believe in it. So because guests require that. The second thing is, uh, I think the biggest part of that uh, distance between um, uh, hotels or, or hoteliers and technology is the cost factor. Mm -hmm. is the in transparency so it's very hard for a hotelier that doesn't work 24 7 with technology to understand what is the added value of that small part of the customer journey to my small hotel somewhere in i don't know where so that is this uh, translating this gap is what we have to do as as a as a as a sector as an industry to make it more easy for people to find what where their problem is yeah so that is the one thing the second thing is I don't see a tendency in replacing people. I said it, I think, over the last two days already a couple of times. Yeah. People at my front office, for example, they do 80% of work that is senseless. So Thank explain you, yeah. me the reason why we have to um, write a, um, a registration form 
put it in a storage, store it 13 years. And when I look for something, I have to send you in the basement and say at the 15th of March of 2010, there was uh, Lea checking in. Can yeah. you bring me her registration card? That is insane for everybody who is involved in, in this time. So why? Why do we have to do 80 times the same thing? And I said it earlier, yes, there is work that works like this. You just do it because it has to be done. And there can be a solution to do that much more efficient and much more in the terms of our teams uh, and give them the freedom of do other things probably with more intensity. And what we forget is that, especially I'm coming from a big company, so the administration work is so huge and all this administration takes the time of my of my team away that they should spend with the people and the guests and make them happy so give them the freedom to congratulate to a birthday ask how they are and how they feel and interact with them tell them where you have been at the weekend and don't force them to like answer the telephone and tell them 200 times a day that the breakfast is from 6 to 10 30. i don't i just don't get it so that is not replacing the people i want to give them more freedom to work and interact with our guests and that's what we should use technology for yeah, yeah. i totally agree and it's, it's a really important point like reducing the monkey work done and just giving people time back to be human and have interactions and creating the community and again there's a funny a funny story out of my experience there's a, a very good uh, i don't know if i'm allowed to do any uh, commercials and sidekicks but there was a there's a very good um, uh, technology that um, that tracks down emails that come to an email box and like a reservation one room from that to that for me and my wife and this technology does it automated and they they say we want to reduce this boring work of rid of, of booking a room for a person something that the internet already can do but the guests don't want to do because they want to send an email or they don't want to use their credit card or whatever we're going to take over that and so your people in reservation they are more free to do other stuff and i said wow that sounds amazing yeah, i really I want to do it so I came back, it was in my old hotel, and I came back to my team and said, hey, why didn't you think we do that? And I had immediately like a very cold atmosphere and the team said, why? I said, well, I don't want you to be bothered with that minimalistic work, that nonsense work, I would say, like going there, adding the date, just putting the name in and then sending out a confirmation. Right. And the feedback of my team, and that was really amazing, said the whole day I'm just doing like name lists and I'm doing very stupid work and checking credit card numbers. And this moment where I'm really inter interfering and really talking, even though in an email, to a real person about their own booking, you want to take that away from me. Right. I don't want that. So I didn't do it. So your team understood the added value of a technology like that? They, they understood, but they said, no, I, I want to do this work. This is the work that I like. This All is right. the work that makes me feel um, connected, with, connected the with the real guest and not with a person somewhere in India in a call center, which is great, uh, who asks, can you please extend that, I don't know, that uh, option date or whatever. Right. And, and then we sit there and I said, that's the typical perspective. I would have said, get rid of it immediately. They said... Well, actually, I do like talking to Mr. Müller and his wife, who is coming at the 15th. What or can whatever. you say? I mean, it's, that's also a valid point. But... And adding value to their work, to our co, our heroes' work, is what we have to do. So, and, and then I said, okay, I love the technology. Obviously, they would love have to work with me, but my team wasn't that um, convinced, and they didn't want to take it. So I left it. I didn't do it. So you, so I stopped. You, and, I, did, I didn't. Right. Because it's not about my ego. It's not about me thinking it's cool. If I don't add a value to those people that work with it, why, why should I do it? So that was cr probably a good learning, that it's not always yeah. my vision of whatever we do. Yeah, it's very interesting. And uh, speaking of learnings, mm -hmm. um, what I find very interesting as well, I mean, we mentioned it before shortly, mm -hmm. you were 20 years with Accor. Mm -hmm. You worked like the last station when I'm taking I hated correctly. that you add two years to that. It's 18. It's 18. Oh, I'm yeah, so sorry. I'm it's young, 18. Huh? Yeah. Don't make me older. Don't. So it's 18. But you can say almost. But <laughs> yeah, almost. Yeah, almost, almost 20. Almost. So Almost. Almost 20 years yeah. with Accor. <laughs> with a, I mean, this is a, it's a huge company. This yeah. is a, you worked with Mercure. The, the last, last hotel brand, was Mercure, yeah. The which, last brand. Which you can pretty compare. with. It's not really comparable with the student hotel. True. So um, I'm wondering, like, what was your, during this career, what brought you here? What was your, your highest point of, like, which was the, the moment that gave you the 
where you learned the most and what was wow. the and then I also want to know because that's also very interesting what was the moment that was the lowest where you mm. said oh there was a turning point or mm -hmm. okay the, uh, you can't compare Mercure as a brand to the student hotel as a brand and you basically you cannot compare Accor um, with the student hotel as, as companies it's not possible so that was a massive and important part for me because I'm very loyal and I, I no strings attached. I, I loved working with Accor. I didn't never, there was no reason for me to leave. Still, the bonds are very close and I know them. I mean, I did my whole career there, so there is nothing. And no, hopefully too, you, you learned a lot, obviously. Of, yeah, of course. And I, I was able to make mistakes, which is always something which is very good for an employer to make your people grow with them. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was very, very good. But there was a moment where I... Um, I always said there's three reasons for me to move on, and it would be uh, a new opening because it's mm -hmm. strictly not in my vita yet. You did. Oh, you I right. never opened a but hotel you, but you physically. Covered, you covered sales marketing. Yes, you, you were general manager. Yeah, I did all that, that, but in none of the hotels was like an, when I joined a new opening. All right. So I, I helped see. with the Novotel Tiergarten during the opening, but I was more on a strategic sales approach than less than an operation, uh, coordinating people painting walls. Do Which we is, have the beds in or you know? Yeah, it can be, do, <laughs> it can be used that room already or is there still uh, no bed? Yeah, exactly. So that was something missing. Then obviously I was keen to go a bit away from the classical corporate ap appearance of a hotel, more to an easy be yourself kind of concept. Um, and the third one was um, I really wanted to do something where um, a new brand has to be implemented. Because Mercure is strong, but my the, the goal in the last five years for, was to add a bit more spice to a very good and structurized soup. I would yes. put it that. So I, adding a spice now, I'm literally cooking a new soup because it's not existing. So that's a different kind of approach. That was the reason. And with this project, I was able to um, fulfill all three parts of that. And the reason where I learned the most and the reason or the moment where I learned the most and the reason or the moment when I was uh, probably on the, on, the, on the lowest in my career mm -hmm. was both at the same stage. Uh, I, I had the chance to work one year in Africa. I was in, in chat, which was more than a challenge and it gave me much more um, patience and, 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 and deepness, I would say, and uh, more acceptance of our life and the what we have here um, than every all the positions before and that was the the biggest challenge and I learned in a year so much not only on a social base but as well on how grateful we should be uh, about what we have and what we operate in, mm -hmm. in in a modern world and that was the only or the, the only moment in my career where I was so um, doubting if I have done the right spot, or the right, uh, right choice. Uh, the right choice in doing that. You can tell for, you that for the, for, the, for the role itself yeah, or well, for the industry. For no, the industry. I never. I have never issues with the industry. The industry is marvelous. All the people are crazy, and that's why I love being Besides in the industry. Me. You are more than that. <laughs> Which is, uh, well, probably the talk in another moment. <laughs> Not now. But I have a lot of stories about that as well. If they're, if they're interested, they can mm. write me emails. <laughs> um, no, it was probably more um, my personal role because I, I was young. I was 29 when I decided that I want to proceed my career going away from the strategic regional sales manager or sales responsible that I was having run key accounts, travel agents, everybody in them. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've worked with all of them. I had learned so much and I said, I, always my goal was to be a GM. And the gap between the strategic role of a sales regional guy and an operational general manager it was huge at that time. I, mean, I think it's still, it still huge. today, do you think? I guess it's still huge, but I think due to the speed, the mentality, I said it once, the mentality of how do you get a booking into your room is for a general manager probably today more important than to know that you need to put the plate with the meat from the right and it has to be like this and that and this. So this strategic approach might be a, a huge factor today. But at that point, it was a bit hard. And I asked the core, I said, I'm ready to, give, to go to a hotel. And it was, and that's, uh, that was at that time for me not understandable. It was not possible. I said, there was I would, no option. No option. I said, I would work everywhere in the world. I'm a guy. Which is a to, dream for an employer, actually. Today, you want these people. I said, yes. I'm ready. You tell me where to go yeah. and I'll go there. I have no kids, no responsibilities. I'm young, I'm handsome, I'm smart. I'll do it now. Right. And then they, there was no offer. I remember it very particularly. I even applied for a hotel in Poland and they, they said, well, you, you're a great candidate, but we need to hire somebody local. 
All right, yes. So I said, okay, then uh, China, no, uh, there was no help of it. So at the end, it turned out that my very good friend Christian Hushka, who was here the last uh, two days yeah, as well. Yeah, I was happy enough to meet him. Yeah. He's a great guy. He told me, hey, why don't you come to, uh, to chat? So he brought you there. <laughs> he, he told me on the phone and I immediately hung up. I said, well, I don't talk to a person that tells me about a, spa a place that I've never heard before. <laughs> Uh, and then I googled it, uh, yeah. we talked again, and I hung up again, and then we talked seriously, and he said, hey, think about it, you can be still in a sales role, but you're very operational because there is not the structure in chat, there's only one five-star property, that's ours. It was a Kempinski, Kempinski right? by then. Uh, it, it, was owned, it was owned by Gaddafi. I just wanted to say, <laughs> it has an interesting side note, yeah. Yeah, there is a, there's interesting stories as well, which would be uh, probably as well much too much to talk. But uh, We should make another episode on that. We should get Christian and me in and you will, we see you crying laughing because it's it was, it down. It's it was down. insane. <laughs> yes. But um, so, so that role was very operational and gave me like the layer of going back to operations, which I really wanted. And... I did that. I was young and I said, okay, now I do it. I leave Germany. I've never, I've never been working away at that, that moment. Also, I always was it the first time you left Germany? Well, for obviously work? for work, yes, yes, and for longer periods, but right. it was the first time. And That's quite drastic. Yes, and after three months, I was in my little nice 30 square meter hotel room in N'Djamena, the capital of, uh, of Chad. I had no electricity. It was hot as, you don't know, 50 degrees. And I was in my nights in my room. And I just uh, looked at myself and said, but probably that was, it was too much. You left home, you, you left everything, you have nothing. You don't know what's going on here. It's a war zone, you have no, probably it's too much. And I did what every big boy does. He calls his mama. So I called my mama and I said, mama, I gotta say, I think I might quit and come back. And my mother is a great lady and she's very smart. Obviously, she knows me quite a time. And she said, okay, family means you have always a place to come home. You always are allowed to come home. And the only thing I request from you is that you make sure it was your choice to go there. And it's your choice to stop it. Nobody else can be blamed for your decision. Neither the one nor the other. So if you go, go, come home. We'll, I mean, obviously, you're, you're not... Um, dying you're not your life will not end but you have to accept the failure at one end of this of that of that decision and if you accept that uh, we're ready to move on we will support you and by saying that she tackled a bit a nerf and i said no 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 so That's, she made you change your mind I, immediately i said you're a you're a man you always laugh you always have a big mouth and you say you want to do everything and the first challenge that comes across and ahead you uh, you duck down and you go back to mama I'm not sure that is really authentic in a way. And then I said, no, no, I'm going to finish it. And after that three months, um, that was the best experience I've ever done. And I stayed and finished the contract. And I was, uh, I'm still, I still have contact with a lot of people. Uh, it's 10, over 10 years ago. They're marvelous people. And it was the best experience in my life. But this moment when I was there and I said, no, I don't want a failure here with the first challenge that you have. But I really know today and after this moment how it feels like when your battery is completely empty. Mm -hmm. You have nothing more to give and you, you, you would love to give, but there's nothing left. So that was probably the spot. And, but that was... Uh, that gave you the most? Yeah. Like, but, but, but was it a highlight? Or it's more like... It's, the it highlight, like I think, real after, after that decision, the highlight kicked off. But that moment itself was a bit of low light. You know, when you really sit there and you say, okay, what? What are you going to do now? You go home and then you start over again. You work with, uh, with, uh, with another hotel company or you start again as a sales manager. Do you really want to do that? That didn't feel nice at that right. moment. Yeah. Yeah, I can see. So then you get, went back to Akko after that? Yes. <laughs> In a sort, I came home to Mama as well. <laughs> so you went home to both of them, your I, family well, and your work family? I didn't live with my parents. Fortunately, I think that would have been hell for all of us. <laughs> I moved in with a friend at that time, but then I came back to Berlin very quickly. And I went back to the Novotel am Tiergarten, where I was hired as the EAM Executive Assistant Manager, which uh, was great. And I had the opportunity to put that sales and strategic effort and that operational effort from Africa into one uh, combined role in a, in a large hotel, in one of our uh, flagship hotels by that time. It probably still is emotional for me, a flagship. But um, I, had, I was able to work in that hotel mm -hmm. that I have helped opening. And I was the number two in that hotel then, five years. 
did the traineeships within our core and then I was promoted to the general manager of the Mercure. Well, yeah. taking, um, taking it back to your current role, mm -hmm. where you're like a general manager in the student hotel, yeah. which you obviously could not do without a great team, which oh. I saw you have. But um, there are voices in the industry, and I see it as myself as well. Mm. Um, there are challenges for us in the hotel industry. First of all, to find people, if we have them, train them, get them to a certain level, and then make sure that they stay with us mm. and that they love working with us. And there's voices um, saying we have an industry image problem. Yeah. What is your take on that? How do you see that? I think at the moment, uh, I guess in a lot of offices there is an interview, it doesn't matter the, 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 the sector or the segment and everybody says we have an, an issue with finding people. That's probably... Uh, you mean across all industries? All industries might have a very similar uh, right. problem, right. Which, um, which I don't care because this is my industry and in this industry, yes, I would say yes, A, we have a problem with the image. Mm -hmm. That is a bit housemate, that is a bit all media right. made, yes, because obviously there are people um, or, or colleagues that are, we shouldn't forget, those people working in our industry is not the best money in the world. It isn't. It isn't. You, you make more money for less work when you're working in a bank as a normal person. You leave True. at five and that's it. It gives you the freedom of plan your life a bit more further ahead. And our industry is something for people, as I said, who are a bit more crazy, who have that ability to inspire guests and other colleagues. And those are the people who really are success, successful in what they do. But all, we always talk about how difficult the working hours are, how low the payment is. I, I did it, just did it myself, how difficult it is. But I always say one, I always tell everybody one thing. If you're working in a bank and you need to go to a doctor, you need to take a day holiday. If you work in a hotel, you say, hey, I, I want to go to a doctor on Friday the 13th, I'll make an appointment. I'll tell everybody I'm off it that day, and in 99% of the cases, you can't do it if you plan it ahead. Or I say, I, I tell the story, you know, from, from zero to hot dog. You know that's indication? From zero to hot dog. You don't know that? No. When you go on a Saturday to Ikea, Right. And you're in the, on the cashier and want to check out. Yes. How long does it take you to get to that hot dog? Everybody wants a hot dog when you're in Ikea. Right. Me and too. it takes you hours. You stand there, people say individual the knife and you see why, why? And you stand there 40, 50 minutes. But go on a Tuesday at 11.30 to Ikea and you're in three seconds from checkout to hot dog. And that's what our industry provides because you can do it whenever you want. Obviously, you might go very often to a very expensive hairdresser, right? I have mine at home, but you're not. So doing an appointment at a hairdresser, which is not um, after working hours at 4, so you can do it at 2 or at 1 or 12. That is freedom that we can give our people. Yes, and that is what we should talk about much more, plus the amazing parties that you can have when you work in that industry at all sorts of angles. Uh, that is quite a, a thing. So, yes, the... the, the the way we look at it is a bit our problem. Um, what needs to change though? What do you well, think needs to change? Let's talk more about IKEA and from zero to hot dog than about that Saturday, Sunday. So it's a communication? Yes, it's a communication. Yes, we do work on a Sunday. Yeah, there are other people that do as well because you go to a gas station or in Berlin to a Späti or to a restaurant, well, which is the same industry. But let's talk more about the possibilities, about the opportunities that we, we, we deliver and that we have um, and the freedom that we can give. And the second thing is, yes, we need to talk to our colleagues who don't probably go down the right way, just to give them a clear indication. And I've seen that. I've seen colleagues in Berlin, uh, a guy that I really like, he said in a meeting, so why don't you pay your people the, the necessary amount of money? You're not even uh, part of the union's contract. And he said, well, uh, because I don't do it. He said, why? At least give him, give him that. Or if you're not part of the union contract, pay them more. You don't, you're not obliged to do it, but pay them as much as you can and make them happy so they don't leave you. You cannot complain you find no people when you don't pay like what they deserve for that work. So that's a bit, that's a bit where, where I would tackle on. And for this hotel in particular, I just opened a position uh, as a, a front office hero. Again, we mm -hmm. have that claim together, we can be heroes. It's, by the way, a David Bowie song. That's uh, the, the that's story. Yeah, yeah, you yeah really, that's you why know? I love your theme as well. Yeah, it's great. Uh, so we always hire heroes in whatever we do, superheroes. And um, we had a front office hero position. And I don't want to be like bragging, but I just in the last six days, I have 102 applications for that role. 
That's an impressive number for That's this an, market. It's, it's not impressive. only an impressive number, it's a lot of work because each individually <laughs> I have to contact now after that days and I spend like writing them what, what am I doing. But, and that is the thing, you expect to have a um, 20 year old guy who did the German Abitur, who speaks three languages fluently, um, who is most, uh, most smart and handsome and knows how to deal, or women, it doesn't matter the gender, and is ready to do that job. And has like a hotel fachmann traineeship, hotel right. specialist, that you don't get. It's not there. So either from these 102, there was not a person, not one, that has a traineeship. It has a background of hospitality. It, they do have backgrounds. They did work in hotels in somewhere in Spain, in Portugal. They have years and tons of experience, but they, have a, they don't have this traineeship paper. So our goal is if we do trainees, if we do the specialists, try to keep them in the industry because this, these are the future leaders. These are the people who can train a team. So it's not, I think it's not a problem of finding um, hands, as we say. We find hands. It's more about how do you train those hands you have and how do you bring them to that whatsoever standard that you want them to be. And that's the challenge that we're facing. Because of these 102, I, I won't hire one. Because I don't see that their role is ready for that size of a hotel, for that amount of a workload, or that I'm ready to train them in what they do. I'm I now see. look more for those people who can train the next one to come. So in my team, there is... Um, amazingly huge characters. They're all great characters. You have experienced yeah, that the last days. Last days with them, yeah. They're so cool, so funny, so reliable. I could not do a, a day work without them here. But they are not like experienced and I give them uh, an SOP checklist and said, okay, can you do that according to the German law or uh, how you have learned it? No, they do it by, by passion and by heart. So. So you're becoming more like a coach as well, maybe, yeah, the in the thing, future. So the general manager has to be a coach and a trainer in a way as well. I mean, all, this team like. I think everybody who worked in the hotel industry has this one manager that he thinks about who was throwing stuff behind him. In, like, oh, I had a cook. But I, <laughs> Me too, though. I, I, <laughs> it was worth throwing it because I was an asshole. So mm -hmm. he didn't hit me with a pen, but he threw it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I got to say, it's much more um, training the people and make them the stay, as you said, than um, living in that I'm the king and you're somewhere down like the guy. Hierarchy, who, yeah, yeah. hierarchy is not, not the key anymore. And here it's really like that. I want to have a team of people who are ready to grow in a role and I want to give them the tools to, to do so. And those colleagues who already do and have those specialists try, should try to keep them. That's my take on them because they will be, they will have the ability of um, producing new, uh, new people that have some sort of certification. I see. So there's some homework for the industry to be, to be done. And we have some regional topics as well, obviously, yeah. that are maybe only applicable in Germany. Um, yeah, to round this off, because I could keep talking to you for hours, obviously. There's so much, many more topics coming up in my head. <laughs> we have to kind of wrap up now. But um, to close this um, up, there's, um, there's a, there's a, we have an audience um, of young people mm. trying to find out about the industry. So what would be your three recommendations, like the three tips you would give to, yeah. let's say, a young hotel student or a young person wanting to pursue a career like yours, what's the three things? I, I hope there are there as well old ones, because as, as we learned, it's not a, not a question of age anymore. So what helped me, I can say that, because I'm really, I came from the moment where I did my traineeship to be a general manager at some point, so I really did the same way. And those things that really helped me was I, I always had a goal, and I literally wrote it down. So make yourself accountable for where you, where you want to go. It doesn't matter when you change it on the way. So not everybody who wants to become uh, the prime minister or whatever will end the prime minister. But even if you're working somewhere in a municipality system, you should have like feel that you did the right choice. So make yourself a goal. Make yourself clear where do you want to go and then put the money on that goal. Yeah, it doesn't matter what one of my general managers said to me after my traineeship. I said, like, either I go to sales now or I go to a bartender school and be like a flair bartender who can throw out stuff and do fire. Yeah. And he looked at me and, like, and he said, well, you can do that. But if you do it, you got to be sure that you do it just because you want to have fun now. It's not part of your career. You can skip it and just like go proceed with your career or you do it for fun. Both is okay, but make yourself accountable for that. So that was the one thing. Have a goal, go towards that. Um, be, be, be clear that 
there is always like a change in that way. So mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter whether you're a, a, a man or a woman, probably you want to have kids or a cat or a dog or something that, or you don't want to be in that area anymore. You want to live in the Maldives or whatever. Accept that and add that to the plan. So make sure that you're persistent in what you do. If you decided to work in that industry, keep on doing it. Sometimes there is, as I said, ups and sometimes there's downs. I promise you, you will remember more ups than downs when you're when you're done with that. I pro promise. I, I agree. I, I, there's yes. more up moments where I really celebrate it. And, and the third thing, and I always said it, laugh a lot, be, 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 be full of joy. Because if you don't like what you do, I promise you it's the wrong, the wrong profession or the wrong area. Well, thank you so much. I definitely liked it a lot talking to you. Thank you for your time, Philip. And well, thank you everyone for listening and tuning in. And please make sure if you liked what we just did um, to check out techtalk.travel and hit the subscribe button. And um, yeah, see you soon. Thanks, Philip. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. So <laughs>